Yo, what's going on? I'm Sprout the Anti-Hero, and with me is my boy Dusty Grant, and you're here at the Sprout and Dusty Show. How you doing, Dusty? You doing all right? Man, I'm doing fantastic. I'm excited to be back. I'm excited to be on the new platforms. I'm just excited overall. We got all right. an awesome, me too. Awesome, me too. awesome group of people. I had a pretty good day today. Got a good guest on tonight, so I'm stoked. Hey, what's up to our people watching on Periscope? We got people commenting from Periscope already. We love it. Thank already? You. Holy cow. Right oh, on. Yeah. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Welcome. Good to have you. We got people viewing on Twitch tonight as well. You know. Hey, what's going on, James? How you doing, brother? Man big week so far it's not even wednesday is it <laughs> no it's not no it's, it's not tuesday. even wednesday yet big week already it's just tuesday <laughs> yeah you know i'd like to start out by saying in reference to last week's show cinnamon rolls and chili is fucking gross so i mean to each his own i didn't like it <laughs> i heard I, that I, on the show i'd never heard of that i, I hadn't heard of it either and I even asked some friends, I'm like, is this some white people stuff here? Because I'm not even sure if white people really eat raisins in their potato salad. I'm not white. I don't know. I have to ask. You know, well, it's I'm, part I'm, of healthy dialogue. <laughs> Dusty, do, you, <laughs> do you do you eat raisins in your potato salad, brother? <laughs> You know, if, not by choice. I can assure you of that. I, I, may, I, I, may I didn't think so. A, I may have had it at one time, but no, definitely not by choice. It does not belong there. I do. I, I didn't think so. You know, like I, not once did I ever see raisins and potato salad by anyone. And all of a sudden it's a white people thing. I'm like, all right, well, I'm not white. Maybe I don't know. You know, <laughs> so, the, so the chili and cinnamon roll was nothing. You didn't, you didn't enjoy it at all. No, I didn't enjoy that. Shit, bro. The sweet didn't <laughs> I didn't enjoy it at all. <laughs> Thank you to the people watching on Periscope uh, telling me welcome back. Um, I did have a good vacation with my family. I traveled to Arizona, as you guys know. I went out and saw my mom and dad, and I saw my sister for the first time in like two years. Uh, with oh, COVID, wow. We had planned a bunch of stuff, and it all got canceled and everything like that. So we finally were able to meet up in Arizona, and mm-hmm. our kids were able to kind of bro down in the pool. And just we, we didn't go anywhere. We all just kind of hung out and ate food and had drinks and, and just kind of caught up. And it was exactly what I needed. I'm feeling rejuvenated. Right. I'm feeling motivated. I haven't felt this motivated and like inspired in a long time. So I, it's amazing. What family, family do that to you, man. Family <laughs> does that to you. It, it's, it's amazing how that works. You know, I, you know, I saw my sisters uh, for the first time, uh, a couple of my sisters for the first time in over a year uh, at the, at the Wichita show. And I, man, it was just good seeing them. I, I was rejuvenated. I felt energized. We drank some liquor. We had a good time. That's what you know. That's what my that's what my family does. We get to sit back and drink, and you know, we smoke herb. We party. We kick it. You know, that's that's how we well, do. You, and you, it's like it, it's when you get back with your family, it doesn't feel like you've been apart. For, you know, even if you've been apart no. for two years, the second I saw my sister, like the same stupid jokes were just cracking off already, and everyone was already annoyed by us. You know, we have our we have our thing. For we sure. have our jokes and. We were doing that, and it was a it was a really good time, man. I didn't end up going to jail. 
And speaking oh, of that, good. I would like to say thank you to our sponsor, <laughs> uh, Big Fish Bail Bonds, Big or Small, they release them all, Big Fish 705 on Instagram and Twitter, 316-262-4100, Big Fish Bail Bonds in the Wichita and uh, Sedgwick County area. If your loved ones end up in jail or you end up in jail, call Big Fish. They will get them out because jail sucks. Jails. What's up to the people commenting on Twitch? We have our first commenter tonight. Oh, talk wow. about we'll talk, let's talk about Twitch for a second, shall we? Yes, you can find us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the Sprout and Dusty Show. You can find us there. Thanks for tuning in, man. We really appreciate it. Making the leap to these new platforms, it's really good to have all you guys with us. Uh, Facebook users, Facebook viewers, I'm sorry, but uh, Dusty and I have some really bad news for you. Some really bad news. <laughs> so, uh, due to Facebook's uh, ethics and stuff that they're liking to pull these days, um, we are slowly but surely phasing out the Facebook platform. And the reason is, is because there are shows and content being censored. And there's also um, no guarantee that we're reaching the people they are saying we are reaching, even with sponsored ads and promotions. We also know that Facebook is not a place where most of you come to view a podcast. While it might be the most convenient place to find all your friends, it's just best for us to be on a platform where people look for podcasts. So if you're those people, follow us on Twitch and Periscope. Uh, I think we had talked about being on YouTube soon, going live as well, streaming. So, um, man, just keep following us. We'll still have, we'll still show some of our content on Facebook. You know, from time to time, we'll still do a little promotion on Facebook. It's just going to be mostly a means of uh, communicating with us. Uh, but for, uh, here pretty soon, we're just going to be on Twitch and Periscope and what other streaming uh, platform that uh, suits us and suits you guys, you know. I mean, instead of scrolling, you can go so it's actually watch. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it almost feels like, a, and I know I've, I've read into the guidelines and I know there was a lot of hysteria. I, I myself included got a little bit involved with that, with the musicians and the everything on Facebook. And I finally read into it and it doesn't sound like they're going to stop musicians from live streaming. Right. Uh, however, however, from my personal perspective, I'm starting to have like a moral conflict with it. I'm, I'm starting to have an ethical conflict with it. I've, I've went out and earned every one of those people that liked my page, man. I didn't for pay, sure. I didn't pay for them. Me too. I traveled. I, I collected those people one by one. Those people electively went to my page telling, telling Facebook, I want to see this person's content. I, you know, the mm -hmm. other day I posted a YouTube link. I've got a new video out. I posted a YouTube link and it was seen by maybe 25 people of 6,200 people. It, right. it, it, within hours and hours and hours and hours and they're just not showing that content to people because it's a link from another site and every time i release new music as an independent artist it seems like there's a new rule with facebook and then i have to pay to reach the following that i earned when they selectively went there i understand there's another side yeah. to that where they say they're a business but you know we also know people from the network and i think you touched on it last week where a gentleman had his show removed because his, what he was saying on the show didn't align with the values of Facebook and their advertisers or whatever it may be. And when they start doing that to you, it starts to kind of feel like they're taking away. Like your podcast is, is you're asking people for their commentary, their thoughts, whatever it is, whatever. Yeah, that's what it's all about. about. Yeah. And, and then they say things <laughs> that you don't align with and then you take it down and destroy. And, and it's just it, it's just like almost a moral conflict. And these other platforms seem super welcoming. So please go to Twitch and Periscope. Please go to YouTube. We're working on YouTube live. Oh yeah. We don't have it yet. Uh, there's just a lot of red tape to get all this stuff going, but we're super excited about these new platforms. And if you're watching on those new platforms, hey, Jacob. we are stoked to have you. So uh, yeah, thank you for that. But yeah, guys, if you can, please look at some other place, go somewhere else. Yeah. Cause Facebook don't like you I'm and they don't like me. Ricky. It doesn't like dusty. Facebook doesn't like any of us. They don't. So let's go to some place where, Oh man, I know who that is. Kiloscope nine one three. That's Ricky Claire. I'm gonna bust your ass when I see you. We we're gonna pick up them joysticks and I'm gonna bust your ass in some Mortal Kombat. I know who you are. Don't let that Twitch handle fool me. I I I, mm -mm. I'm, I got you, Ricky. I'm gonna be there, man. 
<laughs> well, before yeah, before we go any further, I think we should introduce our guest. Uh, our, our guest tonight Absolutely. is Ethan Bates. He's a photographer, content creator, uh, just a hell of a guy, super talented guy at the top of his game. Uh, he did my re- recent music video for me. He's done a lot of my album artwork and single uh-huh. artwork and stuff like that. He actually took the photo uh, for the Sprout and Dusty Show logo. Uh, so Ethan, uh, Ethan's got his hand in a lot of stuff, and we're excited. Oh to yeah. Bring- Ethan Bates, Mr. Chuck Cowley to the Sprout and Dusty Show. AKA Mr. Mustache. How you doing, homeboy? <laughs> what up, fellas? He just got back from Miami. <laughs> He's in the 1980s. He just got back from Miami. I got my uh, Tom <laughs> Selleck going on, man. You do. You for, real, you for real look like Magnum PI right now. And I love that. <laughs> yeah. All you need is a Ferrari, bro. And yeah, you are I hear on that. <laughs> you've already i mean you've already won me over with just the look but uh for the people no that shit. Don't, yeah for the people that don't know you though tell us a little about yourself tell tell the people what you do and and how we connected and you know this is your opportunity to to kind of share your journey with us and that's what the people that are listening want to hear so why don't you tell us a little bit well i'm a content creator i guess that's the easiest way to sum it up because uh oh, yeah <laughs> photography mm-hmm. obviously at first and then i've been dipping into videography here in the last year but I've uh, kind of made a name for myself the past couple of years uh, utilizing vintage lenses. So I've kind of paved the path and uh, using old glass in modern ways now. So like um, uh, like the video that we shot uh, during the concert, that was all just manual focus, that kind of thing. Just trying to teach people that you don't need to spend $5,000 for equipment to have killer content. You just got to right. master your master your tool. <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's absolutely. Like if you're a terrible guitar player. It doesn't matter how much you spend on a Martin guitar. If you really, <laughs> really, really suck, you ain't gonna make that guitar sound good no matter what. You know, yeah. you you need to learn how to play your instrument before you before you go with it. So exactly, yeah, I, I had that. I had that dilemma. Yeah, that's a dope ass porn stash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you guys can understand that the Sprout and Dusty show is first. We bring in folks from all walks of life at the top. Of the Dirk Diggler, that's great. <laughs> I love it. We love oh, we love man. the interaction, guys. If you guys have a chance, please, uh, you know, start watch parties, share. Do oh yeah, that type of stuff. That stuff really helps us. So yeah, please, uh, please do that. But tell us more, Ethan. You're you're dipping into video now a little bit, huh? Yeah, yeah, I've been uh, dipping into video. I was working at a uh, studio in Wichita for the past year, and uh, instead of outsourcing video work to people, we decided to just try and keep it in house. So, right, stepped right. up and started learning a whole new facet. And my God, is it a it's a whole new beast. <laughs> Do you, <laughs> now, do, you t- do you tend to like video better or do you still is photography always going to be your first love and video will always kind of be, you know, the icing on the cake to that? I, I love right. photography. Um, I, I really enjoy the new challenge of doing video work. Uh, you definitely, you got to be on your toes. You got to have more planning uh, with photos because I've kind of gotten comfortable in how I do things um, and basically just show up and knock it out. You know what I mean? Like it's not like, I don't know. I get a rush from it. Don't get me wrong, but something right. about video having having that challenge for me and doing it the hard way, I guess, and the way I'm doing it using old glass. It's been pretty cool. It's but, like that, yeah, it's like the analog recording or like the old yep. school, you know, the old school live recording. I've had the same type of epiphany slash dilemma while learning music production in the last mm-hmm. few years. You know, of course, I'm intimidated by all the equipment that's being used to do the basic stuff and of course every company's telling me that their their product from their brand is top of the line and better than everything else i just wanted something simple to learn and grow from is is that where you is that kind of similar to how you approached um using photography or creating photography with old lenses using new methods mm-hmm. is that something that you really sat down and put thought into it- Actually, it all it all kind of happened just by chance. Um, I had just bought I, I shot for a year with just like a hundred fifty dollar camera. The first year I was mm-hmm. shooting, it was just for fun, and uh, I finally decided to invest in like a DSLR. So I had this little Sony uh, for about three months, I think. And a buddy of mine, uh, he was on Facebook Marketplace, and he was like, "Hey, there's this guy out in Great Bend, Kansas, that has." Uh, a camera with like three lenses for 75 uh-huh. bucks. And I was like, Oh, that's cool. So I just YouTube cool. You can put old lenses on new cameras. So hell I'll check it out. 
And right. ever since then, man, like there's just something about it. The craftsmanship that's, that was put into those lenses years ago. Like, yeah, you know, that, you can't those were handmade that. mainly, yeah. weren't they? Yeah, dude. Yeah. They're all handmade. Wow. They're metal. Like you can feel the heft. I mean, I, I have friends that have tossed like an, a $2,000 autofocus lens on their bed and all of a sudden it doesn't autofocus anymore. Like, wow. Why did you, you know, what well, was if you th- Yeah. If you think about like the lineage of a, of being a photographer or anything that you do, like, it's not like people weren't able to take good pictures with that equipment back then. Exactly. Right. Right. Yeah, I'd see stuff in time magazine. You see, you see these things now where it's like the most craziest historical photos and Mm -hmm. you cannot believe those photos were shot in you know 1960 or what you know whenever whenever it's coming from so it's like they people created great recordings back then people created great pictures back then absolutely Mm -hmm. people people are going to figure out a way to express their art and it's kind of a matter of preference on how you express yours and right. the, like the, the throwback thing is probably why you have a lot of success right because there's not a lot of people doing what you're doing i i think it's been is that i've definitely helped inspire a lot of people people that didn't think that they could afford to get into photography because mm-hmm. i mean don't get me wrong it's it's great to have an awesome lens okay and let's say like a 50 millimeter but if that's the only lens you can afford to play with you know, there's a whole nother world of looks that you don't even get to use because you can't afford a thousand dollars, you know? So I've really pushed a lot of people to Moeller's camera here in Wichita. They've been awesome to me. I mean, when they get something special in, they call me and I come straight down. And I mean, I always give them shout outs. Now I got people from like across the pond that hit up Moeller's camera to see what they have in stock. So it's just cool to see that just kind of come in full circle that, you know, it so is inspiring the, so people. Why don't you tell us, Ethan, the, for the people out there that are listening on, you know, watching live right now and for the people that are going to be listening to the podcast forward, why don't you tell the people how they can check out your work? Why don't you give us your social handles? You know, where do you, if you, where do you want people to look at your stuff? I'd say just go to my Instagram. That's my, definitely my biggest curation. Um, yeah. And it's, it's uh, Instagram slash Mr. Chuck Cowley. Uh, I've always gone with that <laughs> pseudonym. So <laughs> it's something from college and uh, just rolled with it. Um, but that's my biggest, that's where I like to send everybody because you really get the full spectrum. You know, there's a lot of people that they are like, I'm a portrait photographer. I'm a landscape right. photographer. I do macro. And I kind of lucked out by specializing specifically for vintage glass because now I can just shoot whatever I want. And right. I, it's still in that niche. So or niche. So I, niche. I got really lucky doing it. That I'm not way. French, whatever. Niche. We'll kick yeah. you right off. We'll have, we'll have we'll tight. Yeah. We'll have yeah. Your <laughs> so, something I just thought about, like you guys were talking about, uh, you know, music and how it was created back then. And, you know, you look at, uh, uh, you know, like the Beatles and how you had some of that distorted sound because, oh, yeah. of, because of, you know, it wasn't as spectacular as, as it is now. Exactly. Well, a lot, of, a lot of the vintage glass, like the reason why they're, they don't use them anymore is because they have flaws in it. Like there's specific uh, things, you know, photographers are like, oh, there's a, a lens flare or something like that. And to me, it actually gives it character. Like if you go down to Best Buy and you buy the same damn lens everybody else has, what do you think your stuff is going to look like? Right, it right. Like everybody else's, and you can't you can't fight it. It's the composition, other than your eye. <laughs> but I think oh, it's, a, it's an easy in, way. We have people that are into vintage glass that are going to follow you now, Ethan. Look at the reach that the Sprout and Dusty show has. Look at that, <laughs> right, right there on Twitch. There you go. I am <laughs> Nano Economics. Thank you. <laughs> but I, like I, I can remember, all right. Like, I can recall when when uh, we did our first shoot together when we did the sh- uh, the trap tier shoot. Mm-hmm. I can remember you changing the glass a lot and and note the being like, "Yo, move over here." And there's reflections and there was weird stuff where you'd send me pictures and and edits and stuff where the image was like segmented through a crack in the lens and all that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. But I almost I almost did feel like that kind of gave it something special you Mm -hmm. know and the way that we shot that thing you know i don't know anything about what you're shooting or when or the equipment Mm -hmm. that you're using or anything that's like oh you're using vintage glass that's great (laughs) what do you want me to do 
I right. feel like an, I feel like an idiot. Let's go get a beer. You know, <laughs> <laughs> standing here, on right. the, you know, in the in the sunset, trying to look cool. You know, uh-huh. but uh, but uh, but by the time I actually ended up seeing the work, you know, it's why we went back to the well for the Sprout and Dusty Show logo, and it's why I went back to the well for the for the other show, and then eventually the video, which kind of ended up being a whim. Uh, have, is, is music videos and stuff like that something you've always wanted to get into, or is that, that just kind of happened on a whim? It just all, I mean, the video, th- that music video just kind of happened because of like I was shooting the concert. And then when I look at, look back at all the footage, I was like, man, I got a lot of footage right here, footage right here. I don't want to waste it. And then when I listened right. to Up From Here, I was like, damn, this is like, it hit me. So it's like, I, I just want to put a whole thing to, to the whole song like it would be a disservice to just be like oh here's one minute yeah you know? right right you get that build up in the song like there's just a lot of aspects in the music that i, I wanted to kind of throw some video to but yeah <laughs> adam yeah adam i think that's adam schmidt there that video turned out great in my yeah I've, I've got a new video out guys i have to do a shameless self-promotion for a minute sprout i hope you don't shamelessly mind. plug away <laughs> brother i've got a new music video out on youtube uh it's called up from here it's the official video i did it with mr ethan bates here he did the he did the video for it and i think it's one of his first mr chuck Kelly. One, one, of, one of the first videos that you've put out there to like to to share your content so that's an honor to me that you that you wanted to do that and stuff but the video looked so great and uh I appreciate it, guys. If you get a chance to check it out, we'll hopefully link it in the comments here. Um, if I can figure out how to do that, we're we're on all these new platforms. We're like just figuring this shit out as we go. Sometimes, you know what I mean? But it's just, you're, right, you're like, right. How do we do that on Twitch? <laughs> <laughs> I just learned how to do that. Like I kind of feel like an old man sometimes. You know, you're like there's so much changing all the time, the dynamic and everything like that. But <clears throat> oh man, yeah, that, that's. I mean, so when you when you considered doing Dusty's video in particular, I mean, did you have anything in mind just based on the music that you heard, or was it just the sensation of hearing being there and hearing the song? And what what, what was the inspiration for you to really put the work in on the video? Uh, definitely the music. Like I said, I had shot. I already had in mind what I wanted to shoot, and what mm-hmm. I had in mind was basically it's a it's like a highlight, like a sizzle reel. And that's what I had told Dusty. I was planning on just doing like a sizzle reel. So I wanted to get stuff, you know, before the concert, during the concert, after the concert. And that was it. That was the only plan. And normally like when I've done like, like professional setup, commercial shoots, I storyboard the whole thing. Like the whole thing is planned. I know what lens I'm using for what shot, everything Mm -hmm. like that. This was all just run and gun. I mean, I was just running, I was just running around, (laughs) <laughs> and, well, and we, it was weird it, it was just such a it was just such an interesting narrative of the night and then when our photo shoot it really felt like it kind of captured the day you know like we the first time i went to shoot with Ethan, ethan it wasn't like meet me at the studio and i'm gonna make this you know meet me at the studio and we're going to make this super awkward. You're just going to be there with white right. and stuff like that. Like, no, we're going to go get a couple of beers. We're going to yep. hang out. We're going to talk about what we want. Yep. I got a couple of places, all that type of stuff. And we just hung out all day and shot and tried to yep. try a bunch of different stuff. And then, <clears throat> and then you, you know, as a, as the person being shot, you don't feel so weird mm-hmm. when you kind of feel yeah. like you're a part of the process. And Ethan's done a pretty good job, you know, capturing that and that that night was just kind of magical to begin with and then to have the footage from there and turn it into a video it just felt like the stars kind of aligned for that and he sent it to me and i was like damn man that's awesome we (laughs) we weren't even expecting to do that so yeah i'm I'm not i'm not i'm not just sitting here trying to sniff my own farts all night or anything but i i mean i've got a podcast i gotta try to promote my stuff right (laughs) Now, now now we can move on so, Ethan, what is your most favorite location you ever shot in? Oh, boy. Um, it, it really depends. I mean, Colorado, you can't beat Colorado, man. I mean, the views. It, I live it, there, yeah. It, 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 all, <laughs> Hell yeah. it all really just kind of depends on what I'm shooting because, I mean, I could I can do a portrait shoot of somebody downtown Wichita, and it comes out killer, and I'm like, oh, new favorite spot, and then go down right. to, you know, Louisiana. I was down in Louisiana for – months years ago Mm -hmm. and it was just breathtaking too i mean it all it just kind of depends i just see beauty in everything so (laughs) right hey 
I mean, I think uh, this. I do too, and it's gotten me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. You said uh, hang out with the Wang out. That's uh, the most recent publication I just had. It was uh, for a magazine out in Europe, and uh-huh. it was like a quarantine special. Like they were just out of everybody that had submitted photos, I was one of the 20 people they picked they wanted to have in the magazine. And it's actually a picture. Uh, I have like behind the scenes paper? on my Instagram. The paper photo? Yeah. It's me. It's me sitting on the toilet, great photo. tossing the toilet paper. My ass is out to the world. <laughs> we got that picture somewhere. Fat kid. We got that picture. of tossing toilet it, paper. If you're watching, yeah. If you're watching on the screen, which you most likely are, then yeah, there, yeah, it, there is. it is. <laughs> yeah. there, there, there's our homie, Ethan on the shitter throwing yeah. toilet paper at the camera. That's great. So that, that photo was published. Yep, that was published in Europe. Hell yeah. International <laughs> so is that one of your levitation photos? Yes, sir. That would you consider your levitation? So why don't you talk about the levitation stuff? Because I see a lot of stuff on Instagram where you get a ton of reaction to the, you know, the shoe coming out of the water or whatever mm-hmm. it is these these interesting perspectives on stuff that just seem like this one mundane thing from a day. You know, mm-hmm. me putting a piece of gum in my mouth and, or, you know, it makes it look right. awesome. So what's, what, how did you get into the levitation thing? You just start throwing shit up in the air and taking pictures of it or what? Uh, basically, <laughs> uh, it was, I think three years ago. Some like, items need an exorcism, honestly. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think it was Burn like, some sage around that bitch. Really. <laughs> it was like three years ago when I had got that Sony and I just got that it was a vintage 50 millimeter lens. And like I said, you know, there's no autofocus. So right. you literally look at the lens and it tells you, you know, in feet, you know, so you can eyeball it and be like, Oh, that's about eight feet away. And right. what I would do back then was I would know where I needed to stand and I would hit 10 seconds on the timer, run over to that spot. And I had a camera and I'd throw it up. That was a very first levitation one I did. Uh, something just like that, nice. but way wow. worse, way worse from years ago. <laughs> that was the very first time. That was your first one right there, right? No, no, no. This is the, <laughs> this is the you, one, I don't know. Maybe this is the ago. abridged version. Are you telling <laughs> us, are you telling us that you don't piss excellence, Ethan Bates? Absolutely no. not. <laughs> oh, now I'm disappointed. Man, I'm just kidding. I, I have people all the time. Every shot like, was perfect. I have people all the time. They're like, oh, are you a professional photographer? I was like, there's no such thing. I was like, you know, I'm an artist. Like there, yeah. if anybody that claims to be a professional in anything in an art form, I mean, stop sniffing your own farts. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could be an expert in maybe a specific <laughs> thing. You can claim to be an expert, but I, right. I don't know. This is kind of my opinion to me. I'll always no, be an yeah. amateur. So Are you it's, ever it's very broad, man. It's yeah. way too broad to really keep things like it, like it is like to me, the definition of a professional is anybody who does something and gets paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> that's Absolutely. that that it has nothing to do with art <laughs> i yep. mean a professional is somebody who does something it's paid for it yeah you, beat, guy, you beat guys up in the bar you don't get paid for that you beat, <laughs> no you beat you guys don't. up in a, in a cage, you, you get paid for that and then, and then all of a sudden you're a professional fighter you're not just an asshole no. right Be, being right. a professional being a professional does not make one an artist i'm sorry <laughs> not at all. Not at all. i agree with you ethan i do, do you, uh, ethan do you find yourself ever happy with your work are you one of those? Oh, like, man. I'm, I know Are you I'm satisfied, one, Ethan? Really satisfied with your work, or do you ever do you ever sit back and go, "I think I'm just going to enjoy this photo for a couple of days before I get back to it"? I do that a lot, man. Like, yeah, uh, I'm I'm really bad with stockpiling stuff because I'm so critical on myself. Mm-hmm. With, and I, I mean, I show people stuff all the time, and camera like, "Oh, why don't you post that? Why don't you post that?" It's like, I don't know. You know, if I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it. Uh, a lot of the times, I know it sounds weird, but like I said, I'll have a stockpile of images that I haven't posted. And sometimes I'll hear a quote or something. And I'm like, damn, that would be a great caption for whatever emotion was in that image or something like that. You know, good representation. Right. I really love playing with words and photos for captions to kind of like lead the person into my thought. When you so see you it. have like a, when you like when you're posting stuff on your Instagram or whatever. So you have like a kind of a brand in mind for what you have. A, you have a vision in your head of what you kind of want your photography to represent or how you want it to represent you yep absolutely man that's a very standard (laughs) that is a very very thorough social media account because if you know me i just 
throwing <laughs> shit up there. <laughs> I, I have a rule, man. Like no, no pictures from cell phones, no selfies. Like I have no. a two thousand dollar camera for a reason. I'm not gonna. So are you able <laughs> to sure, use, are you sure. able to use that profile to to get gigs? Say what? Are you able to use that profile to get gigs? Like if someone asks you, can I see your portfolio? You send them your Instagram basically. Yeah, basically. Uh, I've been setting up, especially since I've been getting into the video. Uh, Yo, fat the kid, website. where's the broccoli, man? Where the uh, broccoli at, fat kid? <laughs> We're 30 minutes in. This is when it starts. Oh, shit. <laughs> There's the broccoli. There we go. Okay, what How are you, you doing, Mr. Out? Broccoli? What Sprout smoking on? <laughs> Sprout, what are you smoking on tonight? What's the strain I'm smoking on purple magic. Purple magic today. <laughs> Purple magic. That sounds exciting. Do you know what the mix is on that? Santa can, cannabis sativa or is it? A, or, uh, I just you know totally what? lost that. I was trying to go this, for this, this is a, this is a, uh, indica, indica, indica heavy hybrid. And it gives me the munchies. And, uh, it, 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 it makes me look at the little dude on the back of a $20 bill hiding in the bushes. Go red team. Go. <laughs> Yeah, so tell us about your job a little bit, Sprout. You got a new job and you started yesterday. <laughs> you yes. your job. Now you got to tell us how your first day went. All right. So for all of you guys don't know, I work at a dispensary. Uh, <laughs> I'm a bud tender. Now, some of you out there may be like, well, you're probably a natural at that job. You smoke so much shit, right? So, well, it really is about helping people with their ails and their illnesses and things like that. Uh, Oklahoma is a medicinal state, and that is why I'm helping people. So do you do, with, do you do with customers on your first day? Like they have you selling and working the counters your first day, or are they just training you on protocols and all that? I'm stuff? just training on protocols right now. Yesterday, I rolled about 80 joints. It was nice. Oh, so they put you in the back room <laughs> and like, you know, just twist some joints up while we're waiting? Here. Yeah, you know, just – it sounds it, it's it's hell, guys. It's really <laughs> hell. Uh, <laughs> no, my, my my coworkers are great. The coworkers that I met so far were great. The owner of the place, he's a really nice guy, really great guy. He owns a he owns a gym somewhere here in town in Tulsa. But uh, I work at a place called Sativa Savvy. So uh, if anybody uh, needs medicine in the form of cannabis, stop by there. Ten oh eight Arch West Archer. So. <laughs> Come on out. I think they need to see me. Us. We need a sponsor. They should. I mean, yeah, you're gonna. Should, be I do get. I do get tips. So come on in. You know, what I'm saying? You sponsor, sponsor me. You know, we don't care how you sponsor us. Just sponsor us one way or another. Yeah, just sponsor. Is it, that is to go follow us. On it's the all going to the same place, guys. It's all going to the same place. So what's you next, know? Ethan? Are you got any you got any big shoots coming up? Anything you're working on? Like I don't even I guess I don't even technically know the lingo. Like when photographers talk to each other, you're like, hey man, you got a gig or like <laughs> what what's the cool way to talk about like, hey, I got a shoot this weekend at a wedding or like, uh, what, I don't what, know, what, like what are your goals? Like what are you gonna do next? What's up? I got a, I got kind of a big thing kinda of in the works right now with uh two restaurants here locally. Um working on the proposals for them right now, actually. Uh, Where are you? Just out of curiosity. Huh? Where are you right now? Wichita. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. I I didn't even ask earlier. I'm sorry, man. No, you're good. <laughs> yeah, I guess I should have said something when you guys asked, asked so me to introduce myself. <laughs> so when the, restaurant, when the restaurant hires you, are they, are they going to have you like take photos for the menu, take photos of the atmosphere for the website, all that type of stuff? Or what? Like, what is a restaurant going to hire you for specifically? It would just be like a contract job. Like I'd be like, you get 10, 15 edited photos, one minute video, you know, you guys pick what, what items you want. And then from there, once that's secured, then I go in and I storyboard. Like I said, it's just kind of like a, uh, it's like making a rough script, mm -hmm. but it's just strictly visuals. Like I'm visualizing what I want it to look like. So before are they, they, they going to use that for their menu or are they going to use that for their social media? I think, I think it's their social is what they're okay. wanting to use it for. Just creating yeah. content for them. Mm -hmm. to just yep. be like, yo, check out our nachos. Yep. Or whatever. <laughs> I actually did. I did a nachos video uh, for the company I was working with last year. It was pretty dope. A little 30 second video. Just using a little A6000. <laughs> yeah, I remember doing this. Oh, right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, the nacho shoot. That was a it was a video shoot, little thirty second commercial for uh, my buzz is kicking in now. I want some motherfucking nachos, bro. That's a good picture. <laughs> Who doesn't want nachos? Communists, <laughs> right? <laughs> Communists. They don't want nachos. So are you are you pursuing more video stuff as well? Are you wanting, uh, yeah. are you wanting to do more video? I would like to. Like I said. Uh, Using this glass that I use, it's very good for video because it's so clean. And like I said, I like the challenge. So Mm -hmm. being able to, uh, like, for example, the uh, video, uh, that was all straight out of camera. Like there was no post-production touch-up. There was nothing like that. That was all straight out of camera. Um, I've learned a lot from a local photographer here, plug him, Darren Hackney. He's an amazing know, wedding photographer. Darren's a great guy. Uh, mm-hmm. He was definitely been my mentor for the past couple of years, and he's really drilled it into my head from a photography standpoint of nail it in camera. You know, don't be one of those people where you have to use Photoshop all the time to fix what you can't do. Poop with your out, tool. poop in, man. It, 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 it really it, does. That, exactly what, that method. Like go, ahead. go ahead. Sorry, it's 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 that exactly method like music. That method really does seem like it's trying to keep true to the art form. It seems like it seems like no matter what craft progresses and what technology goes through it, the basics of what makes the art form of photography photography gets lost mm-hmm. through all that. So, I mean, those were good words, man. <laughs> well, well, yeah, look at look at the. I mean, like Khloe Kardashian could take a selfie with her iPhone. And then put it through a couple apps and filters and shit, and she looks like an alien or whatever. Oh she God, look like it, that day. It's, and it's like, I guess, how can you call yourself a photographer, you know, and be true to the art if you're just using apps and you're relying on post production to for the quality of your work? I think that I think the photo itself needs to be quality first. Mm-hmm. Right, and then if you're going to use After Effects on it or however you want to edit it and make it look, that's ultimately up to you. And I mean, it, dude, it's it's just like music production. Yep. If you go in there with a crappy track and you have a crappy take, it doesn't matter how much Auto Tune and Pro Tools puts on it, and it's shit. It's <laughs> shit. Shit in is shit out, and it's just a it's just a matter of fact. So I, that's a that's a commendable way to go about it because I can imagine, especially now with all the technology and all the apps that are coming out to edit photos, mm-hmm. where you, you're like, you fucking cheese dick using that. Like, <laughs> you, you can probably see, you know, you can probably see when other photographers are using all these apps and stuff like that. Oh, like, I got mine, you know, the right, right. way. You know, there's yeah. something a little more pure about that. Mm-hmm. So Ethan, let me ask you, do photographers that don't use Photoshop that, don't use all these effects and little tricks or whatever. Did those photographers with just the pure eye, do they get any love anymore? I mean, it just seems like everything just seems so filtered that you really don't know the eye of someone anymore. Is there any love for those kind of photographers anymore? There's a, there's a couple guys. There's one dude that's really blown up the scene uh, this last year. His name is mm-hmm. uh, Jordi Kowalatik, I think. He's, he's right. from Europe. That dude went in one year, went up over a million followers with his photography. Wow. And a lot of it was, I mean, he did use a lot of Photoshop, but it was his creative concepts that he okay. did. Like his, his mind's eye going into a shot, knowing what he wanted to do is just phenomenal. But there are a lot of the people that you see, like in those terms, you just seem like more like, you know, magazine stuff. And a lot of those guys... Right. I mean, they, you don't see that shit out there as much as it should be. Like, if you go to Instagram and go to like, you know, photography explore page, you're gonna see just Photoshop shit out the ass. Like, <laughs> right. I, yeah, like you see people with, I I always joke about uh, like the Snapchat filter effect, right? Where it's like nobody doesn't not have pores on your skin or a wrinkle. Right. You know what I mean? Honestly, and, I kind of like to see those things. <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry, my, dude, yeah. dude. You want to know I mean, one thing? My, my mom said to me, Sprout, just like you're saying, I want to see those things. She goes, "Yeah, your video is really good." She goes, "But it kind of makes you look old." And I'm like, "Well, <laughs> thanks, mom. You know, I'm 39. <laughs> you know, I, I guess I'm not. I, I don't know. Some people consider that old. Some people consider that pretty young. I'm like, she's like, you look like you're about 45. And I'm like, well, I've probably lived life 
about like I'm pretty <laughs> <laughs> No, Dusty, you have not. <laughs> it seems no, accurate. It seems accurate, you know. You've had just as much fun as everybody else, dude. <laughs> I've, been playing, I've been playing uh you know, I've been playing a lot of shows with Sprout. That keeps you young. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks, Mom. <laughs> There's a reason I haven't spoken to my own mother in almost 20 years. I mean, geez. <laughs> you know. We'll get into that on another show on Back Home Media. <laughs> Shit. I'll tell you what, man. I need a couch for that one, and I ain't got one big enough. I ain't got enough time. <laughs> Shit. But, like, I hate, I hate it when, like, a, a, a woman that has a crush on you or something like that, like, women have sent me photos of themselves, and I'll never know what the fuck they look like because – they're wearing these filters oh, like yeah. on these photographs. And I'm just like, what the hell? I'm not trying to fuck a panda bear. I mean, I mean, <laughs> take off the yeah. rabbit ears. Jeez, let me see that hair. Damn. I oh, mean, my, it, it, I hate it when the skin's all smooth. I can't stand that. Yes. Stars. It's like they're, they're Barbie dolls. Are you serious? I'm like, no, I'm no. Well, it's like Ladies, no. Said, you know, like <laughs> his mom was saying how he looked old. And, and I've told, uh, actually, Jordan Knowles, he was the cat that hooked. Dusty and I up. I took pictures of Jordan, mm-hmm. and Jordan's an awesome dude. He loves the concept of photography, and right. um, he really wanted pictures of him just looking gritty. Like he's like, I want to see all the flaws in my face, and I'm like, that's what I'm talking about. Because yes. like you may not like right now, like you'd be like, oh damn, you know I look old, but 60 years from now you're gonna be like, that's exactly what I looked like. Absolutely, you know, like I, I love that. Like if you have a mole or something on your face, why do you want me to Photoshop that? Unless you're getting removed next year, why am I gonna <laughs> Photoshop that out? It's you. Own it. Own you. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Doctor Doctor Satan would love. Like yeah, Doctor Satan. That's yeah. Doctor Satan's couch is always open. I've known Doctor Satan for many years now, and his couch is always open. You're just not gonna like his advice all the time. <laughs> It usually doesn't pan out out too well. No. I I often often wonder why. I often wonder why, like, and we get into authenticity on this show quite a bit. I mean, it's come up. It's come up a multitude of times, but we get into authenticity a lot. I wonder why a lot of these artists are so worried about that appearance because if the art that you're putting forth and your the, the effort that you're putting forth and the heart and the spirit and the performance of what you're doing is 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 truly what's in your heart, it don't matter how you look, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. You know, right. I, went, I went and saw Metallica. James Hetfield did not look great. You know, he, I mean, he, dude, he's getting old. Shit, he's old, man. For an old guy. For I mean, for as old as he is, he looks great to me. He looks right. Like, he looks like he's a holding guy. up pretty good, man. Con- considering, you know, <laughs> yeah, they ran around and kicked the shit out of that thing. And a lot of people tell me that like the best live show you can see right now is Bruce Springsteen. And how old is that guy? And you never see any videos. 116. Yeah. You never see any videos or pictures of that guy. And you're like, oh, he looks old. You're like, no, that guy's kicking ass. Like, it, yeah. it's just, it, there's an off, there's a thing with the authenticity. And I, it, it definitely comes through in photography and photography too. Mm-hmm. And with that said about Bruce Springsteen, if he's really the boss, then I fucking quit. <laughs> Are you sure? I mean, he might be our best option right now. If he's no dusty, boss, I don't know. Look, that's the difference between me and you. I drink Pepsi. I know you don't. Terrible. I'm, play. It's I'm terrible. high. I'm sorry. I'm high. <laughs> yeah, I just I don't think that I don't think that authenticity uh, like shines through for some new artists and stuff. And mm-hmm. I think they almost try to go like too glossy you know like that's true too too fancy and like everything you see is just this pristine blah 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 blah. and even myself on my social media i've i've gotten in the habit of sometimes being like "Mm, i'm not fits my brand you know what sometimes (laughs) i just want to put what i want to post and if people are going to start laughing and interacting and having fun then screw that glossed over picture. I'm going to look like a dummy I mean, in this one and look blurry and just be like, Hey guys, yeah. here, here, here's a little, here's a little example. All right. So there's a, I mean, I've seen a picture of a filtered nipple, a filtered from Facebook, a nipple. Mm-hmm. All right. So like on this Photoshop, basically filtered nipple, 
it looked like a somebody had airbrushed a nipple on a doll. It really did. Oh yeah. It was a nice titty, but it was not <laughs> yeah, it's it not wasn't real, real man. Not a real one. We've seen real ones. <laughs> exactly. I, I want to see the little bumps and the areola and shit. I want to see that stuff. They don't show it anymore. They just want to right. airbrush every damn thing. They want to like Photoshop everything. They want to filter everything. Look. Love love yourselves, man. Because yep. you never know who's loving you back. Yeah, like I, 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 what, a, what a, uh, I mean, what a tiring life that can you imagine? Like, imagine you're one of these upper echelon, huge freaking stars, and every time you leave the house, you got to be like, all right, point. No, I can't imagine. I mean, just, well, except Ben Affleck, he don't give a fuck. Well, I, I mean, <laughs> would you? Would you oh, dude. A fuck? I, if I, mean, I were that rich and famous, I would I would definitely not be out in society. It would not be that important for people to see me every day on the well, street. Dude, yeah, I'd be drinking a Bloody Mary walking into the grocery store with like short shorts and a Hawaiian shirt on and sunglasses and be like, You know I would be punching paparazzi on TMZ. Shit. You know I would goddamn fifty millionaire. Screw all you I don't guys. play this follow me around town shit. You know I would hit somebody, Dusty. It's just <laughs> not the way I live, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I but I mean, can you imagine the the we? I was listening to something with Miley Cyrus, where she, like since a, a really young age, she's been like groomed into this thing, and now she's at an age where she <laughs> understands a little better, and she's done a little work on herself. Yeah, we're talking about Miley Cyrus <laughs> on this show. <laughs> what anybody said, fight me. But yeah, I mean, uh, it, it, was actually really, it was actually a really interesting interview because she mm-hmm. didn't really think about that life. At the time she was 10 years old, she was oh, a yeah. freaking mega superstar with zillions of dollars and never have got told no and nothing. And the fact that she's still walking right now is a freaking miracle as far as I'm concerned. Because can you imagine the pressure cooker that that is? I mean, she, she never had a chance to gain her own self-identity, man. No. Michael she's Jackson's another good example. Tailored. I mean, geez. Oh, mm-hmm. imagine, geez being, imagine being nine years old. Being wh- being whipped every day by a damn daddy to go to work, mm-hmm. and then growing up to be a strange man. Yeah. I believe he was strange <laughs> for oh, sure. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I mean, what do you expect? I mean, <laughs> straight up, Ethan. I'm like, man, yeah. like, th- there's th- th- nothing but weird's going to come out of that. Nothing but something that's not necessarily healthy is going to come out of that. Well, exactly. I feel like yeah, I feel like we've all been to like a, a relative or a niece or nephew or kids sports activity, an athletic event or something like that, and you mm-hmm. see these parents that are like, "Come on, make the, make the play, make the play," and they're like <laughs> screaming at their kid yeah. in front of everyone. The kids like, defense, Cody. Like, yeah. How much yeah, just like oh, chill you, out. They're how much school, fun and he's do you white. think that? I, I, nowhere. I think. <laughs> come on, Ross. Like, oh my god, them Karen moms are hilarious. I look, go to kids' sporting events, there's always a Karen mom there, dude. They're dude, really it's insane. And, I love and- y'all. I love, I ain't talking trash on Karen's right now. I love y'all. <laughs> yeah. Your haircuts are cool and shit. I'm scary. just saying, y'all all about your kids more than others. And if you're <laughs> looking to speak with the manager, it's <laughs> Uh-huh. I don't even know. Oh, it's opposite. Okay, look, if Karen's at a sporting event, they're not looking for a manager. They're Our looking for a referee. Right here. <laughs> the referee's on the field. Right? <laughs> but I mean, can, you, can you imagine the pressure being on you? Like, you see those parents at a wrestling tournament or a basketball game or a soccer game, and you're like, wow, that dude is already living vicariously through his kid. How unhappy is he with For sure. Life? I've been there, man. And he's projecting <laughs> it on a kid. And then making that kid wear that through his entire childhood, and he doesn't mm-hmm. have an identity of his own, doesn't get to pursue things that on their own that they want to. And like, I, I was freaking blessed. My parents would introduce me to something, and if I committed to it, I would, I would have to stick with it. But if I didn't like it, I didn't have to do it the next season. My, but if mm-hmm. I started it, my dad be like, "You started it, you're going to finish it. Yep. And if you don't like it, don't no. do it next year." Mm-hmm. You know, but I know there's a lot of kids where it's like, you're going to play ball and you're going to be an NFL quarterback and that's going to be the end of it. And like that, that, that scenario from the guys I know that have been through that, that never works. Mm-hmm. No, you know, never. Oh man, I'm, I'm a preacher's kid. My stepdad is a minister. And so, uh, it's crazy that I'm an anarchist rock and roll musician who likes to cook and smoke weed. 
Um, <laughs> but it's almost man, fitting, though. It kind of <laughs> is. It, it, it's almost typical of how shit turns out with situations mm-hmm. like that, where um, parents really force their children to down a path to which the parents want instead of treating their child like an individual. And yeah, there are some control things that a parent needs to have with their child, but when it comes to their path, they are their own person, they're a human being. And mm-hmm. so if I wish I wish I was nurtured in that way, uh, Dusty and Ethan, that I could have really buckled down and focused on something. I had to leave my house. <laughs> I, I've, I've, I had to leave my house at 15, 16 years old to figure out I'm a human being, you know? Yeah. I felt like, I felt like somebody's like toy doll for my mom, you know, mm-hmm. me and my brother weren't even fucking twins, but she dressed us in the same damn clothes. Isn't that creepy? Dude, I got a, I got a brother that's a year <laughs> younger than me and that's exactly oh, what my mom did. Cause we looked like twins. <laughs> oh my God. I, have man. Twins. I look, man, me and my brother yeah. got different daddies. I'm, what the I'm fuck? I'm telling man? you what. For, okay. So, so I have, as a guy that has twins, let me explain to you as okay. a parent of twins. If they're forcing the same outfits on you guys, the reason was because it was easy. Yep. They just right. grab two shirts, two shorts, two of these, two of these. Don't have to listen to him say he's got Spider-Man and I got Batman. He's got Teletubbies and I got Ninja Turtles, whatever it is. Power the, kid, the, the twins will like, I want the duck. I want the bear. I want the, and you're creating another <laughs> So you just give them everything the same because at that age, kids just want what someone else has. Mm-hmm. Even right. if they love sure. the thing that they have when they see their brother with it, they want what their brother has. And then it's a fight. And then mom and dad have to stay up later. <laughs> you, see, you guys did it to us, not the other way around. Okay. Don't be right. <laughs> no, I, but, but for us with the twins, man, that literally is what it is. It's like, if we don't give them the same thing, they're going to fight about it. And there's nothing, that was educational. There's seriously, nothing do, there's, no, there's nothing psychological beyond the fact that we're both tired as hell and had a long ass day. And just were like, you know what? Let's just put them in the both, both in the same pajamas, so they don't fight. And that's literally all it was. There's nothing, <laughs> oh, there's nothing introspective <laughs> in that. So if you're carrying any of that burden, <laughs> you like tonight on Sprout, and Dust Sprout is cured. <laughs> <laughs> Such an enlightening experience every time we tune in the Sprout and Dusty show, isn't it? <laughs> ain't no bullshit, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it could be worse. We could be watching reruns of like Quincy Medical Examiner or some shit like that. <laughs> or we could be watching like reruns of Mannix. Uh, Mash. I'm still. Oh man, I was that was boring to me. Well, I did enjoy Hawkeye. You know, I love Hawkeye Pierce. He was he was gangster and shit. I could never get into Mash at. I, I can't even talk about MASH because no. every time I heard the theme song, I was like, no. <laughs> I have watched Golden Girls. I will admit that. My grandma hey. watched Golden Girls. And Bla- hey, Bla- Blanche was a hoe, man. That was my chick right there, man. Blanche was a hoe. I love Golden Girls. Do you think, man. There's, any way, <laughs> do you think there's any way a show gets away with having like a hoe 60-year-old woman now? I mean, like, wouldn't the social sure. media, wouldn't the social media warriors just be out in force? Like, no, because they know one too. <laughs> they know one too. <laughs> Come I, on, I, man! I don't, I don't even see why people start. I don't even see why people are judging people in the 21st century. I really do not. You know. Like uh, there's some things that should be judged, but on the grand scale, like, come on, a 60 year old hoe, you, like you're gonna get her to quit tomorrow. Yeah, if she, if she doesn't tomorrow, she could end up in jail. And you know what would happen if she ended up in jail? She would have to. She'd have to call Big, Big Fish Bail Bonds. Bonds. <laughs> oh my god! Six two six two four one zero zero. Seven days a week, have your loved ones wake up at home because jail sucks. 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 Oh man. <laughs> professional as the weeks go on ethan your episode 15 and can you imagine 115 episodes from now where we're gonna be oh I we're, all gonna, we're all gonna be haggard as hell <laughs> i'm already excited for our next video shoot dude I told I you we're, gonna, we're gonna bust out another music video yeah we're gonna try to do a music video but i was we're also talking about something else that could be a part of the sprout and dusty show which i will talk to mm-hmm. sprout about off the air 
Um, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of exciting stuff coming up. Ethan, uh, tell the people again what your uh, social media tags are, how they can get a hold of you, how they can check out your work. If you want to see a bunch of my work, it's right there on the bottom of your screen, except there's an underscore in between Chuck and Callie. Why don't you spell it out out loud for the people that are going to listen on Spotify later on because they it, won't be able to see it. It is Instagram.com slash Mr. Chuck underscore Callie. And if you just type type in Mr. Chuck, it'll it should pop up. Guys, definitely check out Ethan's work. He's done an awesome job. Uh, he's helped us out. He's helped me and Sprout out. He's got this. Oh hand, yeah, this handsome man. Yeah, he's a buddy of mine, Emerson Romero, dude, Emerson a male Romero. model. Romero. That's right. Welcome that's downtown. To the with show. That's my beautiful girlfriend, Hillary Thomas, right there. It's a beautiful enjoying girl. a puff. I dated a girl named Hillary once. Oh Lord, how'd that go, Sprout? <laughs> um, I, I mean, I. I'd much, <laughs> I much. I could have been at home driving screws through my toes, but uh, I dated a girl named Hillary. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> You're allowed to pass the question. I knew that that was a cheap shot. I apologize. <laughs> oh no, it's allowed. <laughs> I know you. <laughs> hey, who was, hey. Who was Derek? What was that? Let's, let's That's that, that kid right there. That That's kid. that kid. Good. That's the one Ethan took. I know. Man. <laughs> That's the one that broke the camera. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Like, hey guys, if you haven't checked out, Bob, we're, we're going to take a minute to promote some stuff here before we wrap the show up. But uh, if you guys haven't had a chance to uh, check out the Back Home Media page, we have podcasts. Uh, we're, me and Sprout's show is a part of the team. There's this podcast there for everyone. If you're a fan of sports, if you're a fan of missing persons, if you're a fan of anything, we just we have an amazing, amazing platform of people back there. So if you dig podcasts, definitely check out Back Home Media. They've been good to us. Backhomemedia.com. Sprout, what do you got to promote? What's going on with you? I know you're working on something. Yes. I have three shows booked for the month of October in Tulsa. So on October 1st, Thursday, October 1st, I will be playing at Badass Renee's. It'll be me all night starting at 8 o'clock, all night long. I'm playing that long, for real. And then on October 10th, I will be opening up for Travis Bond and the Rebel Souls at the Cimarron Bar. Uh, And then on the 24th, I will be playing at the 727 Club on the north side. Uh, I'm going to have an opening act for that one, but to be announced. Didn't even call me for any of them fucking shows, did you? (laughs) <laughs> you want you want to come and play one? I, I don't Let's know. Do maybe, I don't know. Maybe I will. Let's get those dates nailed down because I have an idea. Ooh. And I will talk to you about that idea off the show too. I got a lot of ideas. I should be entering these in my notes. You, while I, I'm dude, on. I got a log of them in Messenger now from your ass. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, dude, like, hey man, I want to shit you doing this, and then uh, Dusty's like, "Oh, well, actually." Da, 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 da. And I'm like. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it never stops. I don't know, know, my, wife awesome. thinks I'm looking at cat, my wife thinks I'm looking at cat memes, but really, I'm trying to, <laughs> really trying to really trying to figure stuff out so we can do more stuff. Because uh, you know, getting together and hanging out with your friends is just a good time. And and uh, Ethan, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show, brother. You've uh, you've been an awesome guest, and you've had the best mustache so far of anyone that's come on the show. <laughs> that ain't no joke, bro. If that ain't no joke. Any piece of Ethan's stash. Get a hold of the Sprout and Dusty show, but you better bring it because it's legendary and you'll feel like a white van pulled up to your house. <laughs> oh my God. But don't worry, the driver will be holding a popsicle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, guys, thank you so oh, much man. for tuning in. Uh, Hell yeah. Is there anything I'm missing? Follow us on Twitch, please. Connect with yes. us on Twitch and Periscope. We're headed that direction. Twitch.tv slash Sprout and Dusty show. And on Periscope, it's PS. CPTV Sprout and Dusty slash follow. So do that. Make sure because we're going to be phasing out of Facebook soon. So make sure you get to those platforms. The links will be uh, the links will be there for you guys to check out. But yeah, we're always check us out on Spotify on YouTube. Please connect with Ethan on Instagram, guys. Um, it's been a freaking awesome show. I cannot wait to do it again. We'll be letting you know what's going on with the next show as soon as we figure that out. Sprout, tell them what to do. Man, y'all be good to each other. Don't forget to have your hoe spayed and neutered. Yo, fat kid, drop that beat, yo. Well, 
I don't think it, I thought it, that's different. I said what I said and I meant it, or lamented. Words given weight without thought in a person, the way that I talk and the way that I ought to be able to pause and to say that the fault can be placed on my arms and this playful assault to disgrace in this arm. Pray for the day they could wait for the calm. You can't control the storm, only weather it, weather it. It's five weeks and five days of rain sideways, or scorched earth, search for death or water left with all the thorns with the petals gone.